here's how I printed and painted a Gallo Dark board. I've been weirdly into terrain lately, and with my Dark Tide inspired kill team coming together, I thought it would be a good time to make somewhere for them to fight. Big shout out to Orchitect for sending me some files to play around with. He said he liked my work, and the feeling is mutual. I've added a link in the description if you're interested in getting a set for yourself. I printed everything on an FDM printer to reduce resin costs and a cut down on post-processing. The quality is a lot lower on FDM, so I'm not really showcasing the details very well. This is the quality difference. The great thing about FDM is that once you're finished printing, you can instantly pull them off and use them. No cleaning and no curing required. I'm a big fan of printing terrain with FDM for those reasons. I made sure to print all of the walls with the brim setting instead of a skirt setting. A brim is a border only one layer thick that forms a perimeter around the base of the model to help the print adhere to the bed. This really helps avoid the warping that oftentimes comes with FDM printing. I always clean the print bed with rubbing alcohol before each print. I prefer using a magnetized print bed, especially with large prints, because it makes it way easier to remove them. Also, in case you have the same printer I do, the CR10, make sure to turn off eco mode. Eco mode turns off the print bed heating after a few layers, causing the prints to pop off early and often. It made me have like two weeks straight of print failures when I first got the printer. I'm not sure why they have that feature as the default, but if yours has it, I heartily recommend turning it off. The set comes with walls and columns either as snap fit or made for magnets. I went with snap fit to cut out the magnetizing step, but looking back it probably wouldn't have added too much effort to add magnets, and would have allowed for more flexibility with other kits. I was going to glue down the floor tiles to a base, so to save more filament and time, I clipped the tiles into the floor in the slicer by about 2.5 millimeters. I recommend doing that instead of flattening the tiles through scaling, because as you smoosh the tiles, their details get less defined. Just make sure to write down how much you lowered the tiles so you can replicate it later. It's worth noting that the way I'm making the floor, it's going to be about half an inch too short on each side. The set comes with these borders, but I left them off to keep the tiles as modular as possible. I'll eventually print out the border pieces and glue them onto some yard sticks or something to mark out the kill zone, but that's a small project for another day. To make the tiles, I cut out squares out of MDF. I needed four 3x3 three three tiles and two 3x1 tiles to get the right size. Again, if I could do this over again, I probably would have just used foam core or something similar since I had to cut the MDF with a jigsaw myself and it was sort of an ordeal. These are going to be strong though, so that's good. I planned out how each tile was going to be laid out. I arranged the standard floor tiles by alternating between each type and then added the remaining tiles where I thought they looked cool. Then, I glued down the tiles with Gorilla Glue. It gives you about 20 minutes to mess around with the placement. Some of the tiles were a little warped, so I stacked them all with some parchment paper between them, placed some XPS foam on top, and then placed my max bench press on top and let that press overnight. I got everything printed, played a test game of one page rules with my brother to make sure I printed enough walls, drilled some bullet holes in some walls with a drill press to give them more personality.
And then it was time to paint. Painting the walls was gonna be the most work, so I started with those. I was extremely inspired by a guy named Crude Lord on Reddit. So something like that is the goal. I first started by priming everything with a reddish brown spray paint. This gave everything a good rusty base. Then, I masked off the bottom half of the walls with painter's tape. It's better to tear off too much than too little, because it's irritating to have to split more. Also, this is where bigger channels would say, brought to you by Audible. But instead, I sat in complete silence for the next hour, masking off all the remaining columns and walls. I painted the top half with some cheap craft paint and stippled with a stiff brush. This messes up whatever brush you're using, so use something you're okay with ruining. I used the little brush that comes with bottles of resin. I did my best to avoid the very top of the wall to create a little visual border and add a third color to the walls. I didn't anticipate how long this would take me and how brutal it is to stipple that much. Once it was dried, I removed the mask. and then masked off the top. Using a softer brush, I stippled on French Mirage Blue. Hobby paint comes off a lot smoother and easier, so this was still brutal, but not as bad. Also, if you ever wonder why sometimes the audio turns off in my videos, this is an example of why. Filming. Action! Gosh! Everyone's a comedian when the camera's on. I wanted the doors to stand out at a quick glance, so I initially painted them red. For some reason this didn't feel right to me, so I tried yellow. And that didn't work either. So I went online to colors.co to generate a color scheme. It's really helpful doing this if you're stuck. This is what I ended up sticking with. Next, I painted the various parts like canisters, panels, pipes, and fans with model color steel or copper. Then I dry brushed everything with the cheap silver paint. I picked out all the wires and painted them either black or red. I was able to do some of these quickly by using the side of my brush, similar to how you'd edge highlight a model. I also painted all the little valves and dials with white and red, as well as highlighting everything that's going to be bright with white. These more detailed parts would be a lot easier to paint and see if you printed with a resin printer, but I still think they stand out and was worth the effort. Next up was painting all the screens and object source lighting. I first did the OSL with my airbrush. I mixed a drop or two of either green, blue, or purple in some white ink.
The oil cell coming out of the lights was done with a yellow ink. Painting the screens is actually a great way to work on wet blending and mixing paints. I started with the base color mixed with black. Then worked my way up brighter by adding white, focusing lower on the screen. I tried to work quickly to keep the paint wet and workable. Once the screen was dry, I took a tiny bit of pure white and made a dot in the top left corner and a line in the bottom right. You can also make little squiggles and lines on the screen to have them displaying something. I didn't do this on a lot of them, but I'll go back later and add them when I'm bored one day. I painted hazard stripes on the tops of all the doors to further make them stand out on the table. I made a wash with brown and black paint mixed with a ton of water and applied over the details and corners of everything, avoiding the large flat panels. I didn't worry too much about feathering the edges of the wash, since a little staining makes it look grimy. I further highlighted all the lights with white. I used Agrax Earthshade to deepen the bullet holes and to make streaks coming out of them. The last step for the walls was to add some graffiti. I'm going to be adding graffiti inspired by the names of people who donate to me on Buy Me A Coffee to show my appreciation. Huge thanks to Old Max for taking the leap and being my first coffee giver. I'll showcase new graffiti and videos going forward as a thanks. The walls took forever to do, but I'm super happy with the result. With the walls done, it was time to work on the floor. Again, I started with a brown spray paint. This time I used two different browns, a red toned one and a burnt umber looking one. Then I stippled burnt umber with a big sponge and worked my way lighter by adding orange and parchment. I tried to keep all the colors in the brown rusty range. Then I painted some hazard stripes onto the open panels by first basing it in yellow ochre, masking off stripes. and then painting black. There was some leaking under the tape, but I'll clean that up later. And besides, it looks sort of like it's been weathered, so that's okay. Next, I used a big paintbrush and dry brushed with silver.
I made a big oil wash by using a 2 to 1 ratio of black and brown oil paints, to which I added a lot of mineral spirits. After brushing it on, I let that dry overnight. The next day. The next day, I made an orange wash with an orange paint, mixed with a lot of water, and applied that to areas I thought would look cool. I also used some dirty down verdigris to give some color variation. Then, I dry brushed the vents with copper. I sprayed a matte varnish all over the walls and floors, and the board was done. I'm super pleased with how it turned out. Once again, a big thanks to Orchitect for sending me the files. He's been updating them a lot and adding more and more to the sets, including all the little extras you may need. So make sure to check it out. If you enjoyed, feel free to like and subscribe. Consider checking out my Buy Me A Coffee to help support the cause. Leave any feedback or suggestions in the comments below. Alright, bye bye